And now, you're tuned in to RBLR, the home of Tampa Bay's Reveler Sports. Hello, everyone out there in Tampa Bay and beyond. This is James Knowles coming at you for the RBLR Sports Podcast. I'm here tonight covering the Rowdies like I usually do. And like I usually do, I have my co-host, Carlos, here tonight. Carlos, how are you doing? You got that uh, You got that nice polo we were talking about. I see it there. There you go. Check that out. Boom. Fresh, clean. We got the new polo, James. We're feeling good. It's a new week here. Um, we're coming off a great game. Yeah, I'm feeling good, James been a good weekend um i'm excited to talk about this game but um yeah just generally feeling good um what else is going on in my life it's a nice day out i don't know the weather's really nice so that's been cool just been hanging out on the front lawn over here for a while today and um yeah excited to talk about rowdies james i mean there's a lot to talk about obviously um we'll save that for a second but james how are you doing what's going on in your life what's going on down there um in tampa bay yeah, I am back in Tampa Bay after spending the weekend in Deland, Florida, where I went to college. Uh, my wife actually had a roller derby game out there, uh, which didn't go so well, but we all had a very good time regardless. And if anyone listening is aware at this point, uh, I have a better audio setup than I have for roughly the last month and a half. So apologies for that past month and a half, but I think that we're pretty much good to go for the future here. I finally have the setup that I need to actually sound like a normal person in your ear and not uh, like, as uh, producer Eureka said, not like I'm underwater. So um, <laughs> that probably is better for everybody listening and on YouTube. But um, yeah, Carlos, let's just get into it here. We've got a lot let's of good stuff it. to talk about. It's not just doom and gloom like it has been. In fact, oh God. yeah, the Rowdies had two games this past week. One in the Open Cup and one in the USL Championship. In the first game, the Rowdies won two nil, and in the second, Carlos, the Rowdies also won two nothing. It's uh, it's pretty wild based on the season that we've had so far in 2023. Now for the RBLR Cup standings, uh, that means that Eureka and Carlos both get one point. The guest spot also gets one point, and I get no points for this past weekend. But that is where we all sit right now: three, one, one, and two. I think uh, for the guest spot. Now, moving on, uh, we will have to do our reviews, and then we also have a preview of Charleston Battery. If you're listening to this when it comes out, as opposed to right now when Carlos and I are talking, <laughs> um, <laughs> you will have a game tonight to attend at Allang Stadium against Charleston Battery. So yep. we're going to get into why you need to be there, but suffice it to say that you need to go. You have got to go attend. You've got to cheer for the boys against the battery because they are going to be a thorn in our side, it seems. Now, yeah. uh, please like and subscribe to our show on YouTube and uh, every major podcast platform that is out there. But if you want the full experience, we do have that YouTube link. So please check that out there. And, of course, please follow RBLR Sports at RBLR Sports on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Carlos. Let's go. We have our first quick recap. It will be the Open Cup game. Now, this one was relatively small potatoes, and I don't mean to, you know, be uh, – I don't want to diminish anything that Nona FC yeah. did, their amateur team, and I thought that they still did very well for themselves. But um, we have a larger game in the terms of our season context yeah, to yeah, go yeah. over. So let's just do a quick recap, and then we'll move on to the Miami after that. Of course. James, on Tuesday, your Tampa Bay Rowdies played – Nona FC, a team that we just heard about for the first time um, last week. Um, and it went about as you'd expect. Um, Connor Sparrow started in goal. Got his first start for the Tampa Bay Rowdies since coming over here and coming back from injury. Great to see that happening. Jordan Doherty, Kleeman, Guillen made up that back line with Dalgard, Hilton, Dennis, and Harris uh, making up the midfield unit. Uh, J.J. Williams, Lucky M. Kosana, and Felix Schroeder. Uh, made up that attacking unit. I believe it's Lucky and Kazana's first start um, of the season. So interesting to see that happen. But it makes sense that it would come in the U.S. Open Cup game against uh, Nona FC. Uh, Lucky and Kazana did have a hand in both goals. The first was an assist, and then he had the finisher, that second goal. Um, he had a great game. First half was a little dicey. Maybe Nona FC putting up a bit more of a fight than you would have expected. Um, not that anybody who wasn't at the game would know because there was no stream. Uh, U.S. soccer should really fix that and get on that um but yeah uh second half uh based on what i heard uh was an absolute uh one-way traffic kind of half um rowdy is totally in control um about how a game against uh, this type of team should go um yeah so getting sparrow back was huge great to have him get his first start 
of uh, his career with us. Um, hoping to see more of that and we did see more of that a little bit of a spoiler um and yeah hilton got some more time tate johnson got some time um and jj williams got his first goal for the Tampa Bay rowdies as well um so good to see that happening hopefully that starts a bit of a trend for him um and on the topic of first goals james let's jump into the miami recap take it away quickly um let's go into that um i think you have a couple first goals to mention as well I do. That's right. So against the Miami, our lineup was Connor Sparrow, Jordan Doherty, Freddie Kleeman, and Aaron Guillen at the back. Connor Antley, Jan Ekera, Lewis Hilton, and Dayon Harris across the midfield with Ariel Martinez, Hal Jennings, and Felix Schroeder up top. Now, Felix Schroeder got his first goal of the season on his first start of the season in that first half. So not too bad overall. It was his first start in the USL, I should say. And um, yeah, he's obviously, uh, I think that he's looked pretty good, Carlos, the last couple of games. So the fact that he yeah. came in and actually got a goal, that means, you know, some good things in my mind. And we'll get all, to all of that later. Uh, now, Cal Jennings also got on the score sheet and it was his first goal of the season and for the Rowdies as well. That was early in the second half. And from there, it appeared to be roughly over. You know, there were some chances back and forth that I saw, although I only saw it on the highlights. Uh, Carlos, you were the one who attended that game. So I will be relying on you to provide the analysis here because I don't have too much to go off of. I attended the Open Cup game and I will say um, now, like I said, we don't want to spend a ton of time to go over that one. If you do want a review, I actually did a review for the Open Cup website and we'll include a link to that in the description. So, um, you know, if you want a little bit more in depth, then you can certainly check it out there. But otherwise, I think that we will just move on to the USL game here and uh, Carlos I'm going to start asking you the questions this week and we'll just go that way now uh, like I said I couldn't go I was in the land and uh, roller derby is very fun I will just throw that out there but it does not give me a chance to really catch up with the game from this past weekend so how did we start off how did we look and uh, you know how did that whole first half go yeah I think um, from what I recall on the first half started uh pretty good um I, I think we looked at much more how i expect the team to look in terms of ball possession in terms of chances created um it was um, a little bit of a slow start um nothing abnormal there um i think miami may have had the first like decent looking chance uh, in about uh, i think it was the 20th minute early on uh connor sparrow was forced to make a pretty easy save off like a half turnaround shot um nothing crazy for him um and then two minutes later, uh, Lewis Hilton pushes the ball up really, really quick, does his thing, sees the field well, finds Connor Antley out on the right, and Antley puts in an absolute dime of a pass, playing quarterback practically, um, and putting it right on Felix Schroeder's feet on the far post. And Felix had probably the easiest goal of his life. Um, but to his credit, he had to be in the right place at the right time. And I, I think I want to touch on him a bit here because – he wasn't the player I was expecting to feel the most natural in the attack so quickly, um, especially given how late he arrived at the preseason camp. Um, you know, coming from another country, another league entirely, um, can often be a pretty uh, difficult change. And, you know, maybe it takes more time. But honestly, out of, you know, our three main attacking players, I'm thinking, you know, I guess four, um, Ariel Martinez, uh, J.J. Williams, Cal Jennings, Felix Schroeder, and I'm lucky in Kosana to a lesser extent. Um, Felix Schroeder looks like the most comfortable and looks like he can be doing the most damage going forward based off what I saw this game. Um, like, really, he was very involved, got around, um, got got into the right positions at the right times, and I really liked his performance. And that goal, um, I think, really kick-started uh, that performance for him. Um, yeah, really found the right plays at the right time. Um, yeah, after that, first half was pretty uh choppy there wasn't much going for either team um it seemed to be kind of a uh lull up until the end of the first half and into halftime um but overall in terms of you know how our uh how this first half compares to others this season um i really liked it obviously we were winning at the end of the first half so that's a good place to start um we scored a goal which was really nice um and yeah, it, it felt like the midfield was a little more connected with the attacking unit than it's been in the past. Um, I think uh, uh, Dan and, and 
uh, oh my gosh, Dan, I'm butchering your last name. Uh, but Dan, uh, he replied to uh, our tweet um, mentioning a shout out to Jan Ekra for his performance. Um, and Jan Ekra put in a fantastic shift that first half as well, I think. Um, he, yes, Endo Nino. I'm like, I, I was about to say Endo Dino. I'm like, that's not right. And, <laughs> but yes, Dan. Um, yeah, it was a worthy shout out to Jan Ekra uh, because he um, felt like he stepped it up a bit in terms of how active he was in the midfield. Um, for me, sometimes it feels like Jan Ekra when he comes in. He's a very solid player. He doesn't make many mistakes. But he kind of just kind of like drifts into the background and just kind of exists. Um, which is not a terrible thing for a central midfielder. Um, he just kind of doesn't make a mistake. He tracks back well, gets involved when he has to. But in this game, I felt like he was much more involved. And in this half, um, him and that Lewis Hilton uh, combo um, felt pretty solid. Um, and if that's the combo we go with for the next few games, I, I'm not complaining about that if he keeps that up. Um, uh, yeah, we'll have a special shout-out for Jan Ekra later on for, um, I think, reasons everybody knows by this point if you're on Twitter. But um, – other than that, um, he played a good game um, and a good half. So I, I think that summarizes how the first half went, in my opinion. Um, we had control. Um, we didn't give up too many chances. Um, if we did, Connor Sparrow was there to kind of lock it down. There wasn't really anything crazy that Miami had. But um, the first half was, was solid. It was tight. Um, and in terms of our, our performance, um, I think the only thing I haven't mentioned yet is the back line. Um, interestingly, you mentioned it uh, when you did that quick recap. Uh, Forrest Lasso did not get the start. Um, very interesting. Maybe uh, kind of sending a message from those past performances, giving up a couple penalties and whatnot. Um, did come in later in the game. But that back line held up really nicely. I liked the combo we had with Kleeman, Guillen, and Doherty. Um, I really like Doherty on the back line. I think he's a fantastic defender. Um, he can get up when he has to, but he's quick enough to track back. Um, they all had a great half as well. Shut down anything that came their way. So I'm rambling, but the first half was solid. I was just, I was impressed. I was happy. Um, this was uh, my first game of the season, and I, I got a chance to go down there at halftime for my birthday, and they threw my oh, name yeah. on the board and everything. It was just, that was a blast, <laughs> and I, I was feeling good going onto the field, which was a great feeling. Dapped up Felix Schroeder on his way into the locker room because he had that goal. Um, everybody seemed to be in much higher spirits than we have been in the past few games. So it was generally good performance, good vibes. Everybody felt it, including the players. I think that's the most important thing. Great. And I love hearing all of that. That's that's so awesome. Um, and I will say also the uh, RBLR Rowdies hype train for Jan Ekra, it continues. It goes on. Uh, I think we started this, what, was it two years ago now when he uh, had that performance against the old Charlotte Independence with Christian Fuchs in the team? So. Boy, it's been it's been a little while now, I guess, but yeah, um, yeah he's uh, he is definitely one of our favorites here at RBLR Rowdy. So, all right, Carlos, my next question for you then, if you can put your analytical cap back on, tell me how the second half went. I know that Cal Jennings obviously got his first goal pretty early on there, um, but you know what did uh, what did it look like? Did Miami have a response? Were they closer than you know the highlights show? Maybe they were even farther. Um. So I think I wasn't really ever uncomfortable through most of the second half, if that makes sense. Um, tactically, it felt like we came out the same way we came out in the first half. Um, it was solid. Uh, back line was holding up fantastic as well. Midfield was doing its thing again. Um, I, I just I can't recall any particularly dangerous chances for Miami in that first half. Um, well, or in the second half, sorry with the exception of at the end when they just kind of threw everything at our goal, um, anything they had, they were throwing at um, Connor Sparrow. And eventually they almost scored. They had a couple of chances that probably should have been goals at the end, um, but they would have been, they would have been garbage time goals. Like it wouldn't have meant anything other than ruining the shutout. Um, but like we came out the same with the same formation, if I recall correctly. Um, I don't, let me double check. Let me fact check myself. I don't think we made any subs at half time. No. Um, I mean, Neil Collins isn't going to change what was working in that first half. And eventually it led to um, creating enough pressure to lead to a corner kick, I think off of an Ariel Martinez uh, shot, who, by the way, also had a great game. Um, he was moving well, great off the ball movement, creating chances. Um, unfortunate not to get at least a goal. Um, he had a uh, 
He had a couple good looks. Um, but then that Cal Jennings goal came in the 55th minute uh, pretty early on in the second half. And after that, it was just it, it felt like smooth sailing, uh, really. Um, that Cal Jennings goal was tough. It's a tough header. Um, you know, hitting it with the back of his head like that to the far post. Uh, so kudos to him. I'm really happy he got his first goal. I've been harping on that a lot. Like, when's that first goal coming for these guys? For J.J. Williams, who got it in the Open Cup. For Cal Jennings, who got it now. Um, and now for Felix Schroeder as well. So all these guys are notching their first goals. Um, and it feels like it feels like we, we could be seeing the start of that offense starting to click again. Uh, or I guess for the first time. So it was great to see that happening in person for the first time this season against Miami. Um, notably, Miami is in a very dry spell themselves. Um, so it was a good game to get our feet uh, back under us. Um, and I think that second half went, again, just about as comfortable as it can uh, with a two-goal lead. I mean, I've, everybody always talks about how dangerous that two-goal lead can be. Um, but in this particular game, we kept our shape well. Um, we didn't give up any unnecessary opportunities. And most importantly, and we've talked about this a lot, James, over the past couple of weeks, we didn't make any serious mistakes on defense, right? Um, those are the mistakes that have led to free goals for the teams we're playing. Um, there was no, you know, brutal tackle that gave Miami a penalty kick. Um, there was no... Nobody took their eye off the ball at any point in the second half. Everybody we felt very comfortable. Everybody was locked in. We didn't make any silly defensive mistakes to give up free goals. Um, Cal Jennings almost had a second goal himself um, on that one-on-one -on -one later in the half, um, and that was probably the last notable opportunity. I mean, we didn't honestly we didn't create like a ton in the second half, um, but I think that was not necessarily a bad thing. It felt like we were pretty comfortable um, in the second half. Again, Sparrow had to make a couple saves towards the end, um, but things that eventually wouldn't have mattered either way. So good second half performance. I think it's really it's a performance where we can really build off of. Um, there's a lot of big things coming for this team. I think now that we got that win under us, I think now that Cal Jennings got his first goal under him, mm -hmm. and we know it's a guy that can score goals in bunches. Um, just waiting on the Ariel Martinez goal, and we really could be looking at a situation where we have like, three or four forwards constantly rotating um which you know if we will touch on this later on but um in the upcoming games that we have this kind of stretch out of hell um that's going to be really important uh, so hopefully all these guys can get some goals going in bunches and in their own games because we're going to need that depth going forward yeah and um if jan ekra was the elder statesman that uh we as a podcast kind of latched onto in the past couple of years i'm gonna go ahead and say ariel martinez might be the uh the elder statesman that we kind of give that mantle to because so far i've loved what i've seen when he gets the yeah. start um i know that this is something that you said earlier like we kind of expected him to be a super sub type player but oh, yeah. yeah when he has had the start so far i i think that he has been very very influential and he did have a hand in the second goal so yeah, yeah um hopefully that continues now yeah. carlos with all of that being said um with the return of lewis hilton from injury and connor sparrow from injury all of these guys have now got their first goal schroeder williams and cal jennings even if Williams was in the open cup. I think that everything appears to be kind of moving in one general direction, which might not be backwards yeah. anymore, but um, did this game kind of change your opinion of the rowdy so far this season? Now, um, you know, I, I don't want to say that your opinion was uh, there. There are a bunch of, you know, th there are a bunch of trash players. They barely <laughs> deserve to be here. All that kind of stuff. Obviously yeah. that would have been, you know, that would have been ridiculous for anybody to claim, but um let me ask it let me ask it more this way what do you think now is the potential that this rowdy's team has if we can continue to build upon what we have seen so far yeah i think i think it's funny because i i've I actively said all these guys on our team are really good like i i've, I've said the opposite of their trash right i mean these guys i i've repeatedly touted as really good players and some of the best in the league at their positions um, which is why it was so frustrating to see the results not come in as quickly as we would have expected. Yeah. Um, so as far as what their potential looks like, I think I, I, it's still in the same camp as it was before for me. Um, 
definitely playoff like material obviously it shouldn't even be a question especially in, in a league with like eight playoff spots or whatever um that should be pretty easy uh and kind of the bare minimum for this team the talent is there to go like as far as we want it to it's really just a matter of that chemistry starting to click and i think it's going to start clicking now that we've gotten these first goals under us now that Lewis hilton's kind of back in shape um after that injury uh, it's a couple starts in a row now for him so it's good to see that um, in a full 90 minutes as well, by the way. Uh, Lewis did not get subbed off at any point in this game. Um, Neil really liked him in there and kept him in there, obviously. Um, Jan Ekra as well. Jan Ekra stayed the full 90 for you know the older guy that he is. Um, he kept up. He held his weight um, and, and played a fantastic game himself. Um, and again, that duo, we've seen it before. Like It's not new, the Jan Ekra lewis hilton combo in the midfield. Um, we've seen that before, but I, I don't think I ever touted it specifically as like this, you know, dream midfield combo. Lewis Hilton's fantastic, and uh, I think Jan Ecker is a fantastic player in his own right, but never really, the way I've saw, I've seen things, never really like created a ton of offensive opportunity, um, or or got up in the same way Lewis Hilton might have. Um, maybe I just haven't noticed it as much, but this particular game I did notice it. Um, if he keeps that up, I think that potential for a really, really interesting midfield duo that could be among the best in the league um, is exciting to see. Because once I, I think that's one of the big things we were missing this whole first few games. Um, without Lewis Hilton, we are just kind of plugging and playing in the midfield and seeing what might work. Right. Uh, and then rotating our forwards, you know, just as we go to see if that midfield and the attacking unit starts to click. Um, I feel like this game, it finally did. So, um, again, if it's clicking, if we're getting the ball to our forwards and not just kind of having them sit up there by themselves waiting for something to create, waiting for something to happen out of nothing, um, then we have all the potential in the world to be, uh, you know, holding the trophy at the end of the season. Um, when it comes to depth up top, we have a lot of it. Um in the midfield kind of have a lot of it, but at the same time, like, uh, you know, we saw what happened when Lewis Hilton was gone for a couple games. Yeah. Um, so I am a little worried about the injury potential this season um, and how one injury might affect uh, the dynamic of this team, uh, especially now that it's just starting to click. So I, I really hope that this unit can stay healthy uh, for a while so that we can click, we can gel fully and build off this performance into um, the championship caliber team that I know this, you know, this squad should be right. Um, that being said, we'll see what happens. We got to stay healthy. That's kind of out of our control though. It's kind of out of anybody's control. So um, yeah. that'll be up to luck a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm excited. Like it's is you could tell just from how we started the show that this is a very different vibe um of an episode <laughs> than the last couple were oh yeah um and that's a good thing obviously so uh i think i i can speak for both of us in saying that we're both very happy with how this week went mm -hmm. um maybe expected a few more goals in the open cup game but that's okay uh but the potential is there and, and there's a lot of good good looking you know uh pairings and combos starting to form in the attack and um, Ariel Martinez has been a pleasant surprise as a starter. Um, uh, yet to notch his first goal. Uh, wait, am I lying? Did no, he score right. a goal this year? Yeah. Um, so maybe that's coming for him. Uh, but we'll see. Uh, so uh, yeah. In summary, championship caliber team hasn't been playing up to championship standards. Um, but they could. And this performance has given me a lot more confidence in that fact that they could eventually. Um, and I think sooner rather than later now, the goals are starting to come in. And, you know, the shutout too. Let's not forget that. We shut out Miami. Again, not the best team in the league right now, but still a professional USL caliber team with really exactly. good uh, really good attackers. Uh, Rivas, obviously a fantastic player. Um, uh, Claudio Repetto, I think, is a great player as well. Um, and we shut them out. We did well. And we did that without Forrest Lasso for most of the game, by the way. Um, so there's depth in the back line as well if we need it. Um, and Forrest Lasso can come in whenever. Um, he'll probably start again soon, um, if not next game. Um, but we have depth, and I'm excited about that. So 
there's potential and I'm excited for it, James. What about you? What do you think after this performance? Yeah. I mean, I'm generally leaning towards what you were saying as you also alluded to the idea that, you know, uh, this team was ever out of it or anything. It was going to take some time to gel. It took too long to gel for all of us. Don't get me wrong, but um, yeah, it, it was, it was eventually going to click. And I think that this is not it clicking. This is just the beginning, so to speak, but yeah. Um, Anyway, Carlos, my last question for you here. Uh, this should be a relatively easy one for you. Who is your man of the match? Easily, easily. Um, and again, I'm biased towards offense because I'm just a soccer fan and I like seeing goals. Um, Felix Schroeder. I, 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 you know, talked about, oh, I love this little graphic, by the way. This is why you should watch the YouTube uh, podcast. You have a little picture in the corner. Uh, Felix Schroeder, my man of the match. Um, but like, he just had a good game. He really felt, it looked like he felt really comfortable, um, which I did not expect at all, honestly. I mean, he came in really late into the preseason. Again, he's coming from another league, another style of play entirely. Um, and he looks really good. He's in the right spot at the right time. And uh, he is quick. He can finish well, clearly. Um, and I'm just excited to see what he can do going forward because this game, if, if this game is any indicator of his potential and his talent, um, we should be seeing more starts from him uh, going forward. And again, I think that's a pleasant surprise for me because I thought our front two throughout the season was just going to be JJ Williams and Cal Jennings. Uh, but again, uh, with these upcoming games, we could see some more rotation, but yeah, easily Felix Schroeder notching his first goal for the team. Um, you know, not to discount Cal Jennings, his first goal for the team. Uh, congrats to him as well. I just felt Felix Schroeder had uh, a bigger impact on this game and uh, the better performance overall uh, in this game. So congrats to him. Congrats on that first goal, and hopefully you see many more this season, right? Exactly. Um, my man of the match, I did not get to see it, so I had to go with the online statistics leaders, and that turned out to be Connor Antley. Connor Antley not only had an assist on the night, he created two big chances. Uh, one of those, obviously, was the assist. But uh, if you look on the defensive side, he also did a lot of good stuff there. So really quickly, while he did not win one his uh, one tackle attempt, he did make one clearance two interceptions, and four recoveries of the ball. And if you go a little bit farther down, there were two ground duels that he took part in. He won both of them. Aerial duels, he only won one out of three. But he was fouled once and committed zero fouls on the whole night. So with all of that being said, both attacking and defending, I thought that he was doing the best out there from uh, at least a little bit that I saw because I did watch the highlights, of course. And, um, yeah, that is the person that I chose to be my man of the match. So, Carlos, now we have to do the home preview versus the battery. But beforehand, I just want to say liking and subscribing is free. But if you need some new threads this year, you can support this podcast just a little bit more by heading over to shop.rblrsports.com and checking out all the designs we've got going on there there will be a link in the description and as you see there will be a promo code other way uh c-o-y-r for 10 percent off of your order and uh yeah please do check it out you can obviously use that promo code i think that you will find something there that you like if you see what we've got but um all right carlos if you could take it away for the first little bit here of the uh preview versus the battery we'll split that up a little bit and then we will yeah. uh move into the final extra time segment because there's some big news too yeah yeah so the charleston battery game again uh this is gonna be at home this time uh the day this episode comes out um we'll be playing them that night uh wednesday um we host this team after uh going away to them uh, what was it last week? It feels very recent. Like, um, fact checking myself. Two weeks ago, March 25th, um, we went out and lost 3 0 to them in the away fixture. Um, they currently sit in third place in the East on eight points, while we sit in seventh uh, with five points after our win, jumping up the table a lot after just that one win. Uh, Charleston's record is two draws in his first two games, followed by two wins in USL, one of which, again, came against us. Uh, they also won 4-1 against the Savannah Clovers in the Open Cup game uh, against us and, again, against Hartford. Charleston used their current favorite formation, a 4-2-3-1 uh, formation. Muse, Derek Dodson, former George Hoya, Archer, Patterson, Wynn, Allen, Polvara, former George Hoya, uh, Marajas, Markinich, Traeger, Williams, um, have been their go-to starters. Uh, Polvara was, though, sent off in his last game, so he was suspended for this game. 
James, take us through a bit more of the tactical breakdown uh, of this team. You're better at this than I am. Uh, Charleston, good-looking squad, obviously. Scored a lot of goals against us, obviously. Um, what do they bring to the table that we should keep an, out, keep an eye out for um, in this home leg? Yeah, so um, as we fans might remember from the last game, uh, they have two in particular dangerous players right now. Those are Nick Markanich and Anthony. I just, boy, I, I every time I see Markanich, I think of Anthony because there are two Markanich brothers. One of them is Nick and one of them is Anthony. And I'm trying to fit Anthony somewhere into this. So let's try that again. There's Nick Markanich and there's Fidel Barajas. <laughs> um, yeah, there's only one Markanich at Charleston Battery. I guess luckily enough for us here in Tampa Bay. Those, though, are the two most dangerous players they have at the moment. Each of them scored and assisted each other against us. And it should be noted again that Fidel Barajas currently is 16 years old. <laughs> Um, what was I doing at 16? I, I think I was playing for Gaither High School and uh, barely getting off the bench. So good job. <laughs> um, yeah, while uh, while both of them were scoring and assisting each other uh, against us, uh, the game against Hartford, their last game, uh, Nick Markanich scored and Fidel Barajas assisted him. So keep all of that in mind when we go forward. Augustine Williams is a player that another another name that a lot of Rowdies fans will know because he has been a problem for us in the past. He's been a problem for a lot of teams in this league because he has a long history of scoring. Um, he is a very dangerous player up top who uh, scored both against us and against Hartford in their last game this past weekend. So he's also uh, on fire at the moment. They have a very potent attack between Tristan Traeger and and yeah. the three players that I just mentioned, Barajas, Markanich, and Williams, there is a lot of potential for goals and uh, not only potential, but actual goals themselves. So, um, yeah, he will be trying to obviously get his body into places where the defenders have to go and they have to deal with him. And in so doing, uh, if they follow him into the wrong places, then that will open up space for Fidel Barajas, who is very good with the ball at his feet, to kind of build up some speed on the dribble. That will also allow Nick Markanich to do the same thing. He's going to try and get some room to dribble, and uh, the two of them com com uh, combine to usually very good effect so far. And um, yeah, like I said, their record is just only going up at the moment, but... Um, keep an eye out for a further in-depth tactical preview. That will be on our written article tomorrow uh, out in the morning. I am only waiting on the Charleston Battery uh, blurb from our friends at Howler Podcast from, uh, you know, the Charleston side of coverage. But, yeah, I think that the main thing that people in the Rowdy's fan base need to be aware of is up top, they are going to look to have Augustine Williams get in the way and kind of just be a pest, you know, for our defenders. And he's going to try and put people off of their game. And like I said, in so doing, he wants to open up space for Markanich and Barajas to try and work their magic. Where we want to do things on the other side, obviously with the Rowdy switching to a 3-5-2 recently, or, you know, roughly a 3-5-2, maybe a 3-4-3 at times. It kind of is a little bit of both when, uh, you know, depending on where the ball is and who has it. But uh, yeah, with that being the case, obviously the Rowdies have always been a very cross heavy team and we have tried to score a lot that way so far. Um, something I came across today uh, while I was writing out that article, uh, all four Rowdies goals so far this season in the USL, I should say, not just uh, not including the ones in the Open Cup, but all four of them have come from crosses. Two of those crosses were corner kicks. So if you take the set pieces out, then, you know, you uh, go to the first goal of the season, which was Sebastian Dalgard crossing for Jake Araman, who, based on the play that built up to it, was wide open on the far post. And then if you go to the goal uh, against the Miami, then it was Connor Aintley who was doing the assisting for Felix Schroeder, who was, again, wide open on the far post. So something yeah. that we need to keep in mind, uh, I think that the Rowdies are obviously going to try to continue to do this. And, you know, I think Charleston also know that the Rowdies are going to try to continue to do this. So <laughs> it's uh, it's just how well we can do it with them being aware of our plans, because pretty much everybody knows that the Rowdies are going to try to cross the ball a lot. But, yeah, like I said, check out the article. It will go into depth uh about all of that a little bit more and um like i said it will include that nice little factoid that i found about all of our goals so far in the usl and um speak to that so the last thing here carlos uh we have to do our predicts for the game against 
uh, Charleston Battery now. We have to continue for the RBLR Rowdies Cup standings. And uh, everyone listening, if you can, please do send in your suggestions for what the victor's prize should be. We are still taking suggestions on that because so far we've mostly had either drink suggestions, whether those are of the alcoholic or the iron brew kind. But uh, <laughs> I'm sure we could get even a little bit more creative. So um, send us anything that you think that we might be able to get each other if, uh, if you know, one of us wins. So, all right, Carlos, I see that Eureka has put his guests in and our guest Mike Pendleton has put his guests in. So what is your prediction for this game? James, I don't think this game is going to go like the last one against Charleston. I really don't. I think we learned from our mistakes. Um, I think Forrest Lasso will not commit a boneheaded error like he did last time. I think we, we hope not. That we're not I, I, yeah. I think we learned that we're not going to give the 16 year old a million yards to shoot the ball because he can, and he will. Um, and I think we'll come out with a win. It's going to be scrappy. It's going to be tight. And we're going to win 2-1 on $3 Bud Light night. It's going to there be we great. go. Everybody's going to have a great time. Everybody is going to enjoy the $3 Bud Lights on a weekday. It's going to be fun, and we're going to win, James. It'll be a blast. I think it's going to be a good game. I really do. It'll be back and forth. It'll be choppy. Um, I think we'll pull out a really, really tight one, though. It will not come without you know, uh, your heart being out of your chest type game. Um, but I think it'll, I think we'll come out with the win. I do. Um, defense is playing better. Um, we have our feet back on the rest back there. Uh, but Charleston seems to have you know, too much attacking force for us not to give up at least one goal on some sort of mistake or, you know, a Barajas just miracle goal, right? Um, that being said, our attacking unit seems like it might be starting to click. So we scored two goals last game. I don't see why we can't do it again against Charleston. Um, yeah, that's what I'm going to go with. 2-1. I think we'll pull out the win in a tight one uh, on three dollar Bud Light night. <laughs> That's just I don't know why that I, I opened Twitter on on the side here and that was the first thing I saw. So it's been in my head now for the past few minutes. Hey, three dollar Bud Light. Not, I mean, compared to what we usually pay, I'm I'm gonna say you can't no, beat yeah. that. The only problem it's cheaper. Is that... it, it's cheaper than the Iron Brew I find at Publix right now. It's way cheaper. Iron yeah. Brew is like the six only bucks. Problem... Unfortunately, is that it's uh, on a Wednesday, so I don't know unless uh, somebody works in a field where they can either start the day late or just take a Thursday <laughs> off. Um, I'm not sure exactly how appealing it'll be. It was probably the best night for the Rowdies to do that, but you know, fair enough. Um, so my guess, again, this is what I usually do each week, just a gut feeling. Um, I'm going to go with 2-2. I think that 2-2 is good because they are a high power attack right now. Sure. Um, but I think that the Rowdies are actually improving in that sense. So I'm hopeful that we will be able to get back into it. And uh, if we move on to our next one, producer Eureka has put in his prediction, which is a one nil win for the Rowdies. And Carlos, if you could do the guest spot for this week. Yeah. The guest slot for this week, Mike Pendleton. Uh, love you, Mike. Shout out uh, at fat seven deuce, which I still don't know where that name on Twitter came from. I've never had a chance to ask him. Uh, P H A T seven D E U C. Just I don't know. Mike says we're gonna come out with a three one Rowdies win. Um, love the optimism on that one. I would love three goals. Um, James looks like once again you're being outvoted. Uh, three wins being predicted to uh, your draw, which I believe was the same thing you went with last week, right? You went with a draw last week. Yeah, actually, that's true. Um, I did. And, you know, last week I didn't have as much like internal optimism. So I'll, I'll explain that a little bit more. Um, usually, like I said, I go off to just these gut feelings and, you know, it's kind of like a very internal compass kind of thing. If I do it logically and I try to think through it and I'm like, OK, what are the factors here? What is it looking like? Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Like against Charleston, my logic was, OK, so the Rowdies have a full lineup pretty much minus Lewis Hilton because we weren't sure about Lewis Hilton and I guess Connor Sparrow but I wasn't even considering him at that point um, I said that I assumed that the Rowdies would be able to do well because Charleston was missing five players to international duty three of them were starters and, th and all three of those starters were on the defensive line so you know if you lose both of your starting center backs and your starting yeah. left back the logic kind of went there all right, I think we should be able to get a result on that. And I don't remember what I predicted, but I, I'm almost certain it was just dead wrong. <laughs> uh, I could scroll up in this document, but the uh, scrolling on my mouse doesn't work so well. So I'll just continue to I'll just guess and say that um, I, whatever I said, 
I think that I predicted a win and it did not go in our favor. But um, yeah, so after that, I was kind of like, well, um, I haven't had as much luck in terms of actually getting these predictions uh, if I'm, you know, trying to think it through because soccer is never as logical as you want it to be. And uh, right. you can you can kind of, you know, follow the statistics as much as you want. But um, they're even trying to make up statistics all the time to better measure what happens in a game because, you know, it's very hard to do that in soccer. In baseball, yeah. you can kind of be like, okay, this guy is very good at this. This guy is very good at that, whatever. Um, the rowdies playing soccer, you can be like, well, sometimes this works and sometimes this doesn't. And, so, <laughs> you know, it's such yeah. a low scoring sport that um, you just don't get enough instances to kind of do that. And that's why I'm kind of going with the gut feeling here. But yeah, yeah gut feeling last week did not lead me uh, down the right path, which is lucky because I predicted a result that I actually didn't want to see. And uh, as much as I'm doing that again here, I do hope that we get the win. But yeah. uh, just very, very internal compass, very, you know, right out of the right out of the uh, cannon. The first thing that I think is uh, another two-two draw, but just or at based least on vibes. Draw. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. That was a long For way to say vibes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. For context, uh, I, I scrolled back up. I did it for you. Oh, the. Uh, game against Charleston, our predictions for that game, I predicted a one nothing win at Charleston, um, and you predicted a 2-1 loss. Uh, so you were I more did. right oh. than me. Yeah, you were more right than me in that game. Uh, ultimately, we lost 3 nothing, but we could see a little bit of marginal improvement in, in, in your optimism, at least, because you went from a loss prediction against the battery to a draw prediction. So you can see the optimism of RBLR going up slowly as the season progresses. So this Wait, is now that you say that, now that you say that, um, I uh, the first idea that I had about Charleston, based on where we were and where they were, I said a 2-1 loss. And then yeah. the day that we were recording, that is when I uh, you know, was making sure all of our uh, information on the dock was correct, and I included all of the international duty absentees. And that's ah. when internally I was like, Oh, now there's some logic yeah, saying yeah. the Rowdies can right. win. That's right. But I think that we already had the graphic created, and I never actually went back and changed it. So, um, in the end, it was it was actually the gut feeling that was correct, and it was the yeah. logic that was wrong. Because when I went back and did it, I logiced my way out of what turned out to be the right thing. So, um, <laughs> never yeah. mind. All of my context that I just went through, all of that stupid preamble was wrong. <laughs> but um, okay, perfect. That's why I'm going to stick with the uh, the gut feeling. There we go. There you I, go. I was that, uh, I was right against Charleston. Yeah, I mean you can see the optimism increasing slightly. I've, as always, I usually predict the win. Um, so, like I said, doesn't mean anything. Uh, but your optimism is going up. It's, it's funny to go back and look at these uh, predictions to see that happening. So, um, good vibes from RBLR Sports, uh, generally speaking. Um, should be a good game, James. Absolutely. I, I feel pretty good about it. So, okay, um, Carlos, let's do some extra time. Let's go through that. We've got two very cool little bits of news here. One of them, I think, is a little bit bigger than the... Actually, you know what? No, that's not true. I think they're both extremely important. And uh, one of them is very, very cool, I will say. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the first bit of news, as anybody who follows the Tampa Bay Varieties would know by this point, is that the Open Cup for... The, sorry, the Open Cup draw for the third round uh, came out and it paired us with the Houston Dynamo, um, who will be playing at home on Wednesday, April 26th. Everybody jot that down your calendars. Everybody should be there. You gotta um, go. I yeah. I I don't think I, I think it was Mike actually Mike Pendleton, um, who made a good point about this on Twitter that um, only us you know U.S. soccer sickos really know what this means in terms of hosting uh, Houston Dynamo at home mls squad at home uh, it's the first time we do that um an open cup in 10 years when we hosted the seattle sounders at home uh in 2013 i believe which again we won that game uh so hoping for that same energy um on april 26th but if you're not a sicko like myself or james or mike pendleton or dan and like anybody right or eureka uh, uh like you have to go out tell their people about what this game means because genuinely like this stadium should be packed to the brain, even though it's a Wednesday, um, cause it's that big a game. Um, James and I had a, a little bit of a discussion about this, um, before we started recording about, 
um, what this game means. Would this win be bigger than like a USL championship final win? Uh, it's up for discussion, but it, the fact that it's potentially in the same category, if not more important, um, maybe I would argue it's a little more important actually, uh, but we'll save that for another day, um, means it's really important. Uh, it could be huge for us if we manage to pull that off. So again, just it, it's it's so rare that we host a team, uh, MLS team at home um, yeah. in the Open Cup. Uh, it's so rare that that actually happens. Um, so let's take full advantage of that. And if you can, be at that game because it means everything to Rowdy's fans. Um, why not us, right? Sacramento pulled off a crazy run last year, and they were a middle of the pack team at best. Um, they were <laughs> when that, yeah, when that happened. Um, no offense to them, it was a good team. It just it was a, kind of a random team to make that run, in my opinion. Um, so I mean, it really can be anybody, uh, and it starts with uh, just one win. Uh, against Nona, and now hopefully a second win against the Houston Dynamo. Wednesday, April 26th, tickets are on sale now um, from what I saw. Um, so go go check that out. I um, really, really can't stress how big of a game, how cannot stress how big of a game this is um, and what this means to, or what this would mean to the Rowdies lore, right? I mean, everybody talks about that Seattle Sounders game to this day uh, and that Jeff had another performance on that game, like, it's it's part of our like lore when those games get um, when we pull off those wins, um, so it would mean everything if we pull it off. Be there Wednesday, April twenty sixth. Um, huge huge opportunity for the Tampa Bay Rowdies. Yep, absolutely. And the second piece of news is the very cool part. I would say Jan Ecker made two hundred fifty appearances in the USL Championship as of the game against the Miami on Saturday. So that's. That's incredible. I mean, he is the second player ever to do so. And according to Eureka, uh, I believe who found this on Twitter, he is two away from the all-time record. Two appearances away from the all-time record. If he plays this weekend, which, I mean, barring injury, we should expect that he will, then he will be one away from reaching the all-time appearance record in the USL Championship. That's yeah. that's insane, Carlos. I mean, Jeez. I have talked about how much I like Jan Ekra and the stuff that he does for the Rowdies multiple times on here. I think you have done the same. Eureka, when he comes on, he has also talked about Jan Ekra, but it's not just, you know, it's not just that he does a lot of great stuff. It's that he is that very stereotypical, I guess, consummate professional. It's something that a lot of people talk about. You know, you have to be uh, a professional to stay in the game as long as people like Jan Ecker have, because it requires sure. a lot of you, you know, there are a lot of great players who flamed out. There are a lot of great players who, unfortunately, uh, their career didn't go to plan. You know, um, there was hell. You could look at even Freddie Adu, unfortunately, you know, there are players who uh, just didn't kind of pan out the way that they were supposed to. And they ended up uh, by the time that they were not even 30, they're out of the game. Jan Ekra is past 30 and he's still going very strong. And, you know, this might not be the level that he, uh, you know, expected to play at when he was a teenager, so to speak. But um, I think that his quality shines through every time that he's on the field. And when he kind of, you know, does what he does for the Rowdies, the best things that I see uh, Jan Ekra do is A, pressuring the opposing team without the ball. And that requires a lot of fitness. <laughs> you know, he's, I, I believe he's older than I am. And um, there's no way that, uh, you know, not a professional athlete, of course, but there's no way that I could keep up with the amount of running that he does uh, over the course no. of 90 minutes. And yeah. um, beyond that, the other thing that he does best is when he has the ball at his feet, he is pretty good at beating one or two players and trying to connect the midfield and the attack. And, um, that requires uh, a real intelligence to know when you have the time to do the things that he tries to do. Cause there are a lot of times that players don't, and then they lose the ball. And yeah. uh, I don't think that, you know, Jan Ecker does get dispossessed. It's not like he's Lionel Messi out there, but um, it's a lot fewer times than really it should be, you know, if you uh, look yeah. at it that way. But yeah, I, I, I really like Jan Ecker. I really am happy for him. And um, I don't, I don't know if there's anything else to say, but congratulations to him. Yeah. Yeah. Just crazy crazy level of iron man endurance that that takes that's really really cool to see um and then keeping up that quality too right like you said to get those appearances um is very very difficult so it's, it's cool to see and i'm glad it's happening with the rowdies um because he's been on a few teams over the course of his usl career um i'm glad that you know 
these this milestone is going to be achieved um, with the green and gold. Really, really cool to have him um, in this time in his career. It's really cool. Absolutely. All right. Well, that will do it. Thank you, listeners, for tuning in. And uh, if you please could check out our uh, preview article, that'll be out tomorrow. And like I said, if you do want to get any more on the Open Cup game against Nona FC, I attended and wrote up the Open Cup website's review as well. So you can do that in uh, in the description of this episode. And uh, please follow RBLR Sports for Everything that we just went over and more, uh, you can do that on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at RBLR Sports. You can also get at me on Twitter. I am at RBLR James K. Carlos, what about you? At Carlos GPA 10 on Twitter, the usual, tweeting about all sports. I've been tweeting a lot about the Rays recently. Um, I've kind of gotten into baseball, which is a little new for me, so bear with me because I don't give really intelligent baseball takes. <laughs> I just post funny memes because I love like Ray's Twitter is fantastic. I think Ray's Twitter is the best Twitter of any Tampa sports team. Like the memes on Ray's Twitter is just fantastic. So um, yeah, Ray's baseball is cool. By the way, shout out to them 10 and 0 in the season to start the year. That's pretty cool. Um, they have a game now, if I'm not mistaken. So it could go 11 and 0, who knows? Um, yeah. Love everything about uh, Tampa Bay sports Twitter world. Always Feel free to shoot James or I a question uh, with hashtag AskRBLR. Um, always nice to field those questions on the episode. Yep. And please like and subscribe to our podcast. Again, you can get the full experience and watch us talk about this instead of just listening to us. We are on YouTube. And in addition to that, we are on Spotify. We are on the iHeartRadio app. We are on Apple and Google Podcasts. We are anywhere that you are that you anywhere. listen to podcasts. Anywhere. So, uh, anywhere. In the middle of the week, coming out for a game that uh, is also $3 Bud Light Night, as we mentioned, (laughs) come on you rowdies. Thank you for tuning into this presentation by RBLR Sports. On your way out of the stadium, please remember to like and subscribe.